Greetings, it is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord Emperor the Jacobin Empire, and welcome! It's time to continue my discussion on anime series, I review them for you, and then give you some basic information that you could use to adapt them to your big eyes, small mouth games, your Bessem games. Today I've got two from this current season of Winter 2017, and a couple more from back in 2015. Two from this year are Demi Chan Hua Katari Tai, and of course Kobayashi Sanchi no Maid Dragon. Let's start with Demi Chan Hua Katari Tai, or Interview with Monster Girls. So this is set in a world where dem Demi humans have existed, and we're in the modern world, and Demi humans, nicknamed Demis, are beginning to be integrated slowly but surely into human society. We focus on Tetsuo Takahashi, a biology teacher that has an interest in demi-humans. He, from a scientific standard, because again, he is a biology teacher, and it's part of the kind of studies he wants. He finds out there are three such students, three demi st demis at his school, and he's their teacher. So he ends up basically interviewing them, learning things about their personal lives themselves as demis, and getting this information while along the way helping them out with their own personal lives and the very hardships they face as both being basically teenagers and demis. That, you know, the various prejudices and problems that still exist because of their own natures and the problems they face with it, both helping them out and learning from about them as a demi along the way. Now, for its genres, it's a comedy. A lot of funny things happen. There's a lot of funny situations. There's this level of comedy that seems to exist in it. Not hitting you over the head comedy. Little subtle things that make you chuckle and smile. It's also supernatural. They're demi-humans. They have various weird powers. You have a vampire, a Dullahan, and a Yukiona as the three main demis. And technically a succubus too as one of their teachers. But all of them have unique powers which are beyond the normal scope of things. Now it's also school. It's based around a school, school life. It's effectively that kind of slice of life way of doing things that they're living in this, that they're dealing with them at a school about the teacher and the students and the lives they live there. I rate this one a five. I've been really enjoying this one a lot. It's about halfway into the season, and it, I could not recommend checking out more. It's got a little chuckles. It's got very good, just giving you a warm feeling about watching it. It's very entertaining that way. So if you're using it in your, your Besom games, I recommend 170 points. You're going to make your characters demis. They're going to be students at a school, of course, and they might be the only demis in the school. It is up to your game master whether this is true or not. And they're going to have to deal with their daily lives as students there. They're probably going to have some kind of teacher figure like Toru that they're going to be able to look up to and get help from. And they might even have a, st a teacher like the succubus demi teacher that might be there to look out for them. That they might have these connections there of a couple of teachers that help them out. And they're, they're, not, they're going to get into small comedic situations. It's going to be very lighthearted fun. But there's just, uh, there is going to be this underlying thing of dealing with the fact that they are demis. And perhaps there might be some prejudices out there. Not a lot of them. Not really terrible ones. But there also might be these problems with the fact that you know their abilities make them feel like they're separate from other people and keep them from getting the more intimate relationships and that developing the relationships with each other, with their teachers and helping them kind of blossom into people is going to be the interest of the story. So it's going to have that deep slice of life feeling, that deep school related feeling while still having the supernatural. And of course, you just want to litter in little comedic things going on, things that maybe parts of the character are kind of silly or little silly things happen to them to help keep it that lighthearted attitude. Now the next one I want to talk about is Kobayashi-san Chi no Maid Dragon, or Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. So this focuses around, of course, Kobayashi, who's this office worker, who one night after work gets really drunk, wanders around, and runs into an injured dragon named Toru. She basically helps out Toru a little bit, kind of befriends her, and then kind of offers her to stay at her place. Toru effectively accepts goes and shape changes basically to a mostly human form and effectively becomes Kobayashi's maid because also she's a huge otaku and basically said to her that maids were best while drunk 
And so we have the misadventures of the two of them living together as Kobayashi and dealing with Toro as her maid. And then the various other dragons, which tend up to come from their world to our world and end up basically getting involved in Kobayashi's life. Now, this again is a comedy series. It's another one that this one has a little bit more just that humor just happens and you get a little bit more of a laugh out of it, definitely. It you just is very funny things that happen with poor Kobayashi and dealing with the zany antics that Toro can cause trying to get along in this world. Our world when she's got the kind of idealisms of a fantasy world and some of the things that happen when relation to other dragons and the fact that Toro herself, to Kobayashi herself, is quite a character. It's also a fantasy in a way. You've got dragons. They have magic powers. They have their magical abilities, things like breath weapons. They can shape change between people and dragons. Do various crazy things like that. That, of course, you know, fantasy elements. And it kind of is a slice of life because it focuses around Kobayashi and her home life more than anything. We do see her go to work, deal with some of her co-workers, deal with some of her hobbies, but there's this huge focus on her daily life at home with Toru, and the things that occur there, and the things that occur because Toru's a dragon, and because of the nature of Kobayashi and Toru's relationship, and such like that. It's another one I rate a 5. This one's been really good too, and I actually enjoyed the manga of both of these series before getting them as an anime, so I was excited when these came out as animes. I'd recommend both for checking them out. Now, I would recommend 600 points for this one. You're going to be dragons. Very powerful ones, tending to be like the more powerful dragons, and you're going to revolve around either Kobayashi or a character like Kobayashi that all of your characters are sort of going to deal with. And effectively, it's not going to be about the fact that they are very powerful creatures. They are. It's about the fact that they're going to be tempting to live in this modern world, our modern world, and get along in it. When they don't have the sensibilities for it, they don't know about it, they don't know what's going on in it. So they're going to be challenged with living in a modern human world when they are these very powerful creatures with powerful magical abilities and they're going to be trying to get along with humans some of them might have those prejudices or hatreds for humans to bring in but all of them and in the end will be tempting to get along with them live peacefully with them and you might even try to be like one that's developing a relationship with the kobayashi character whether it's more romantic or platonic is completely up to you as a character and how you want to build it in the game now, moving on to the two series is back from 2015, I have Nisekoi, and to start with, I have Digimon Adventure Try. But in particular, I'm going to talk about Digimon Adventure. Now, Digimon Adventure, the original series, focuses around a group of kids at summer camp who find these strange devices and then get teleported basically to this digital world, the Digi world, where they then find these creatures, Digimon, which are sort of bonded to them. And as they develop the bonds between the two of them, these Digimon gain abilities to basically evolve into more powerful forms to help defend them and fight against the various threats that come against these children as they travel through the digital world attempting to get home and the various adventures that both help protect Earth and the digital world along the way. Each of the series is focuses on a different point in time in these children's lives. Digimon Adventure 2, the second one, that focused only on a few of the main characters from the original series and a couple new characters. And when we get into Digimon Adventure Try, it brings back the entire group of main characters. And that's the series that sort of has been come out now in a series of movies. Now for rating this, for the genres of this one, it's action first of all. Their Digimon, once they've transformed, get into huge battles, even in their smaller forms. They get into huge battles, fight other Digimon, battle against other e enemies. It's adventure, too. They go on massive quests where they have to travel the digital world, traveling across all these important places, meeting different characters, doing different things. It's also kind of science fiction. It's based around this concept that the digital world is like this world embedded in the digital data of our world, which is kind of this strange and interesting concept about it. So it does have this very sci-fi feel to it with everything. Now I rate this one a four, just because the original series does have some memories from me because it came out in the time of the early, of a bunch of anime resurgence in the US with things like the original Digimon, Digimon Adventure being translated. But the series itself, too, not only because of the nostalgia, but because it is a pretty decent series, I would definitely rate it a four. This combination of factors, that it is pretty good for a 
pet monster series. It's a very it's the classic pet monster series next to Pokemon. Now I would recommend 250 points if you're using this in your Besom game. You're going to make all of your characters go into the digital world. Effectively, they're going to have some kind of adventure in the digital world or revolving around it, and they will have Digimon partners. You, you, you can actually focus on the entire three series if you want to, or you could choose just one of them and focus around that as if you're taking the roles of the characters in that situation. You can keep to the storylines of the original Digimon, or you could come up with your own, but regardless, your characters are going to be in there with their Digimon partners, developing the bonds not only with each other, becoming deeper friends and allies of each other, but deepening the bonds with their partner Digimon to allow them greater evolutions, to create more power in order to defend themselves from the various enemies and different challenges they will face along the way in their various adventures within the digital world. Whether, like in Digimon Adventure 2, they return back to the human world in between it, or whether they're more stuck in it, like they are in the first one, or more that they choose to journey to it, like in the third one. And it will be completely up to you as the game master how your characters go, and it is up to your characters how they will act in these circumstances knowing the initial setup that you're giving for them. And as I said, you could take a very long campaign going through all three of them, or you could just focus on one of them if you really wanted to. Now let's finish up today by talking about Nisekoi. Nisekoi focuses on a young man, Raku, who happens to be the son of a Yakuza boss. He runs into Chitoge, a girl that happens to be the daughter of a rival boss to his, to her, to his father's, and he basically loses this locket, which is very sentimental to him. She eventually helps him out finding it, and then the two of them return to Raku's home, and they effectively find out that the two gangs are attempting to basically make peace, and by doing this, the two of them effectively are playing the parts of Romeo and Juliet and are dating. But it's sort of their fake dating, so it's an entire thing of them pretending to be in a relationship while others around them are attempting to notice it. And of course, along the way, we deal with the other characters, the friends that they each of them have, other rival gang members, other members of the gangs, and developing the relationships between all of these characters. And in, all in the meanwhile, we deal with this kind of mystery of Raku's locket, and the fact that there are this girl that had a key to it. And we find out there are more than one girl with keys to it. So we deal with the fact that Raku has this locket. Bunch of girls have these keys, which one of them is supposed to be the one from his memories, which opens it, which he sort of had a crush on. And so there's this mystery, romance developing. It's very interesting overall that there's this mixture of them in the series. It's, of course, a romantic comedy. There's this overlying uh, thing of romance between various characters and many comedic situations happening in relations to the romantic feelings that they have, that nothing can ever seemingly go right, always silly things happen, it just has a lot of comedic moments. It's also a harem, to a good degree. There are a bunch of girls that like Raku. Raku kind of has a crush on another girl, but then sort of develops feelings for Chikage, and there's also other members that various have feelings for both of them, so there ends up being these kind of mixed harem elements around both of them to a small degree, more around Raku, but it, <laughs> it does have that focus of the harem group around them. It's also a school. It focuses around them going to school and their school friends. It does have some home life built in there, of course, with Raku dealing with the fact he's from a Yakuza family. It doesn't really want to inherit that. He's got his own plans in life. But it does have this entire essence of what happens with them at school and the various adventures they have revolving around them. I do rate this one a four. It is a very good series. I would recommend checking it out. I enjoyed it a lot. Now, if you're using this in a Bessem game, I recommend 140 points. You're going to be a group of friends slash rivals slash romantic interests that is going to be your characters. And of course, you probably want to throw a few NPCs in there to balance out this entire thing. And some of your characters are probably going to be related to some kind of criminal organization, like the Yakuza or something else. Granted, they could be from the same organization, rival organizations, different organizations that aren't really rivals whatsoever. But this entire concept of the criminal organization, Yakuza or otherwise, is causing problems with the school lives of the various 
characters that are involved with that. And of course, you do have some characters that aren't directly involved with that, that are involved with the problems with those characters that are involved with problems. So it's really the, the problems with the criminal organizations are being a problem for all the characters. And of course, you deal with the various romantic relationships between the characters, maybe between some NPCs. You bring in some various comedic elements. Maybe one of your or two of your characters ends up having this sort of small nexus of haremness built into it. But it is built around their attempts to live normal school lives with this craziness going around all the characters that reflect in it them trying to deal with them. So that's it for today. I talked about four more anime series, which are very good anime series. Two fives, two fours. They are great series, which I recommend checking out, and each of them in its way would make a great source for Besame. You have, of course, more of a slice-of-life fantasy, comedy fantasy, more of a action-adventure, and of course, more of a romantic comedy. All of these settings, great for Besom, and I'd recommend you trying them out on your own. So if you have questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave them in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It shows your support for the channel, the Empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, Link description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell. <laughs>